Bow your head with me. Well, Lord Jesus Christ, Father, here we are. Lord, um, not what I will, but what, what thou wilt, O oh Lord. Not what I think you would have me to speak on, but what thou, O oh Lord, would have me to speak on. Lord, um, as we go through the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, Lord, please give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and understanding hearts, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Father, I am inept. I am incapable of doing anything unless thou, O Lord, art the one who are doing it through a vessel meet for your use. Lord, that you be glorified. That's, that's all it is about, that you, Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, be glorified. And Lord, right now, with the uh, second wave coming, the Jesuits going to turn up the dial on the 5G, and so many who we thought were of us are going out from us, showing that they were never of us in the first place. And also, Lord, the, the enemy... Satan and his ministers are just going crazy right now. Um, coming out in droves, in multitudes. Showing us that um, you are close to calling us up. But anyway, Lord, um, please be with this mouth. Speak unto this congregation through your word. And Lord, may you through your word alone do the speaking. Not me, not my quit, not anything that has to do with me at all, Lord Jesus Christ, Father. I repent. Please be, get me out, Lord, get me out of this. <laughs> that thou, O oh Lord, may be present. We ask this all in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. One second, brethren. What is this? Of course. All right. Hmm. Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. And turn in the authorized version of the scriptures to Jeremiah chapter 20. Jeremiah chapter 20. We're going to read this whole chapter. I hope you can handle it. Follow me along in the scriptures. You are expected to do so. Okay? Jeremiah chapter 20. Now be sure, now pay sure, the son of Emir, the priest, who was also chief governor in the house of the Lord, heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. What things did uh, Jeremiah prophesy? Impending doom and destruction upon Jerusalem at the hands of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. And Jeremiah was telling the people to submit to Babylon. But the people of Jerusalem weren't having any of it. Uh, begin, uh, continuing at verse 2. Then Peshur smote Jeremiah the prophet and put him in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin, which was by the house of the Lord. And it came to pass on the morrow that Peshur brought forth Jeremiah out of the stocks. Then said Jeremiah unto him, The Lord hath not called thy name Peshur, but Magor Misabib. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will make thee a terror to thyself and to all thy friends who he was looking to placate and they shall fall by the sword of their enemies and thine eyes shall behold it and I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon and he shall carry them captive into Babylon and shall slay them with the sword. Um... Guess what, brothers, sisters? 
Impending doom is coming very quickly. Are you saved? I hope you are. In this video, I'm going to be linking two salvation videos that are not of mine own, but of the brethren. One by uh, preacher Aaron Judge, and one by Brother Mario, which is very, hmm, very good. Going to be putting those in the description box of this video. Check those out. Okay, let's continue. Moreover, I will deliver all the strength of this city and all the labors thereof and all the precious things thereof and all the treasures of the kings of Judah will I give into the hand of their enemies, which shall spoil them and take them and carry them to Babylon. And thou, Peshur, and all that dwell in thine house shall go into captivity, and thou shalt come to Babylon, and there thou shalt die and shalt be buried there. Thou and all thy friends, to whom thou hast prophesied lies. Prophesied lies. Once we get over, <laughs> once we get over the pandemic, the fictitious COVID-19 poison crown, once we get over that, Oh, there's going to be a revival coming, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, those of us who are truly of the Church of the Living God are warning people. You better repent. You better get saved. Because we, the Church of the Living God, are being called out of here very soon. Very soon. And see, those of us of the Church of the Living God are giving warning. But doors are closing right now, aren't they? Doors are closing. People are going back to Egypt, onto the world. And those who, and many of those who we thought were of us, falling away, proving that they were never of us. Let's continue. Now note this, this is Jeremiah speaking unto the Lord. Note this, O Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily, every one mocketh me. Hello! How's that one for you there, brother, sister? You're out there. Speaking the truth on the people. Making them aware that, hey, the Jesuits brought this all on. This is all the doing of the Jesuits. The Vatican, Roman Catholicism. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocketh me. People mocking you. Because you're not pointing them to a church building that practice that practices social distancing that does take the temperature on the forehead and and that, and that's happening here in my town. Now where are you leading them to? Uh, again, to the scriptures, onto the Lord Jesus Christ to have a personal relationship, a one-on-one. -on -one relationship with the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Now what? We're supposed to point him onto a building to practice social distancing and, <laughs> and get their uh, temperatures taken by having something jammed into their forehead or something? Yeah. 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 Now look at verse 8. For since I spake, I cried out, I cried violence and spoil, because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me, and a derision daily. See, we of the Church of the Living God, we're busy warning people. We're busy putting out the truth. And people don't want to hear it right now, do they? No, because the doors are closing. We're out there doing our parts. Here. Out there, we're doing as the Lord would have us to do. 
For since I spake, I cried out and cried violence and spoil. Because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily. God wouldn't tell you to say kinds of things. That, that's your interpretation of the scriptures. You're a heretic because you believe that the only the authorized version of the scriptures is inerrant. Given by inspiration, perfect word of God. That's what? That's cultish. No, we all need to come together right now. Like they did in Babylon, the Tower of Babel, under Nimrod. Bring everybody together so we can make us a tower that we can reach on to heaven, that can reach on to heaven. Oh, you shall be as gods, right? Bring everybody together right now. No, no, there's the separation going on. And those of us of the Church of the Living God that are out there, Performing what the Lord will have us to perform in whatever capacity he has called us on to. You know, as well as I, the hearts are being hardened. To continue. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary, weary with forbearing. I could not stay. Very quickly, hold your place here and go to Psalm 39. Psalm 39. We're going to be looking at, by the way, uh, quite a few psalms. This uh, video is more instruction and right for instruction and in righteousness, but uh, Lord knows we need it right now. Psalm 39. We're going to read this whole psalm. I hope you can handle it. Now, back in Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing. I could not stay. Psalm 39. I said... I will take heed to my ways, that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle, while the wicked is before me. You gotta watch what you say. I was dumb with silence. There's the definition of dumb. I held my peace, even from good, and my sorrow was stirred. My heart was hot within me. While I was musing, thinking, the fire burned. Then spake I with my tongue. Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is that I may know how frail I am. Look at the dependency right there. Look at the dependency that David is shewing onto the Lord, okay? Verse 3, my heart was hot within me, while I was musing the fire burned. Then spake I with my tongue, Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing, I could not stay. Back to Psalm 39, verse 4, Lord... Make me to know mine end, and the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. You might be put in some situations sometimes where you just don't want to speak. And what happens to you? burns in your gut, doesn't it? Burns on you. And then, if the Lord gives you a moment, because remember, He's not pointing a gun at your head, forcing you to do anything, but the Lord gives you a moment that you cannot deny, 110%, clearly is from the Lord, and you keep silent. Whew. 
what happens? Afterward, that moment is missed. That's a guilt and a burden that I would spare any of you from. But then again, what's the opposite? Doing it out of your own, out of your own brain, right? Doing it because you think you ought to. No, no, no. What, what? Look at verse 4. Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is that I may know how frail I am. See, we ain't nothing. Lord, what is our end? Church of the living God, we die. We are going to be forever with the Lord. But if we are alive and remain, he calls us up. Our end is the resurrection, the catching away. Okay? And the measure of my days. Your days are numbered. And woe be unto us. If we shorten those days by poisoning his temple with things we ought not. Rather reach the end of your race because you have fulfilled your course and fulfilled the time that the Lord had had for you down here on earth rather than you being a fool. I have done this before myself, killing yourself by what you intake both physically, spiritually. That I may know how frail I am. Utter dependence on the Lord Jesus Christ. Utter dependence. Let's continue. Behold, thou hast made my days as an hand breadth, an hand breadth. And mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Selah. Every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Surely, every man walketh in a vain shoe. Surely, they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches, and knoweth not who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. Ooh. And you could tie that into the blessed hope in Titus chapter 3. And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. To hear our names called. To be caught up. To be resurrected. See, my hope is in thee. My hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. That's why I'm out there. That's why I'm right here in front of you. That's why you, Church of the Living God, do what you do. In whatever the capacity is that he has called you on to. Remember, when it comes to the work of the Lord... Uh, there is nothing mundane or minuscule nor mighty that our Lord cannot use for his glory. Don't forget that. You understand? Let's continue. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Make me not the reproach of the foolish. And, who, and what is a fool? I was dumb. I opened not my mouth, because thou didst it. <laughs> Again, um, the prayer right before this video. There have been a few things, uh, especially in these past, this past day, that, I, okay, Lord, you want me to talk about? No, no, that's not it. Or, you want me to talk? No, no, that's not it. So, oh, oh, you want? No. I'll give you what I want you to talk. So, okay. <laughs> I was dumb. I opened not my mouth because thou didst it. Remove thy stroke away from me. I am consumed by the blow of thine hand. When thou with rebukes dost correct man for iniquity, 
Thou makest his beauty to consume away like a moth. Surely every man is vanity. Salah. Hear my prayer, O Lord. And give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee, and a sojourner, as all my fathers were. O spare me, that I may recover strength, before I go hence, and be no more. Picking up at Jeremiah chapter uh, 21, verse 10. For I heard the defaming of many, fear on every side. Report, say they, and we will report it. All my familiars watched for my halting, saying, Peradventure, he will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him. We shall take our revenge on him. <laughs> Gotta get even, right? Especially you fakes. <laughs> but the Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. Terrible one. On your own time, look up the definition of terrible. Therefore my persecutors shall stumble, and they shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed, for they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. But, O Lord of hosts, that triest the righteous, and seest the reins and the heart. Let me see thy vengeance on them. For unto thee have I opened my cause. Sing unto the Lord, praise ye the Lord. For he hath delivered the soul of the poor from the hand of evildoers. Curse, <laughs> you ever been here? Cursed be the day wherein I was born. Let not the day wherein my mother bear me be blessed. Cursed be the man who brought tidings to my father, saying, A man-child is born unto thee, making him very glad. And let that man be as the cities which the Lord overthrew, and repented not. And let him hear the cry in the morning, and the shouting at noontide, because he slew me not from the womb, or that my mother might have been my grave and her womb to be always great with me. Wherefore came I forth out of the womb to see labor and sorrow, that my days should be consumed with shame? You ever been there, Church of the Living God? Same is echoed in the uh, book of Job, chapter 3. Check it out. Psalm. 128, Psalm 128, and Psalm 129. Like I said, we're, we're, we're going to be in the, quite a few Psalms today. Psalm 128 and Psalm 129. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord. There are those out there who say, oh yeah, they fear the Lord, they they profess the name of Christ, but in works they deny Him. You know? Yeah, you shall know them by their fruits. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in His ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands, happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children like olive plants round about thy table. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion. And thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Thank you, Lord. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children. And peace upon Israel. Thank you, pardon, excuse me. Now, Psalm 129. Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth, may Israel now say. Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth, yet have not yet they have not prevailed against me. 
You know, brethren, these Jesuit coadjutors, these enemies, not only here online, but out there, they're not going to prevail. Oh, they might get a little here and there, but ultimately, you lose. How you know that? Um, I, I, I got it written down for me. You lose. We don't. The plowers plowed upon my back. They made long their furrows. The Lord is righteous. He hath cut asunder the cords of the wicked. Let them all be confounded and turned back that hate Zion. Now remember, dispensationally, this is specifically for the Jews, but there's a whole lot of instruction on in righteousness here. Let them be as the grass upon the housetops, which withereth afore it groweth up, wherewith the mower filleth not his hand, nor he that bindeth sheaves his bosom. Neither do they which go by say, The blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. Look at verses 1 through 3 again. Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth, may Israel now say. Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth, yet they have not prevailed against me. The plowers plowed upon my back, they made long their furrows. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Work with me, thanks. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 9 on to verse 16. The true life of those of the church of the living God. For I think that God has set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. <laughs> For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels and to men. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and men. Those that the, the Antichrist spirit is inflamed in these people. Actual devils. And more so recently, there I have encountered uh, individuals who, they're devils. Pure and simple. Verse 10. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. We are honor ye are honorable, but we are despised. How many times, hi, have you been made a fool for the name of Jesus Christ? How many times out there have you been talked down because you were reading out of the scriptures and people wanted to believe in a lie? such as the gifts from Acts are still viable today, that this is the latter rain blessing, and that there's a revival coming. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Time I'm out there. We are fools for Christ's sake. But these who are fake. We are weak, but ye are strong. Yeah. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Because they it's their ear, you know, prophesy smooth things. Even unto this present hour we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain 
dwelling place. Right now, especially at this time, that little blanket that you have, the protection as far as finance, or even the literal standing of a house or wherever you may be, at this time especially, could come to naught just like that. In a moment, especially at this time, this close to the catching away, the rug can be pulled right out from under you. At no fault of your own either. It could. Are you ready for that? Are you prepared for that? Let's continue. And labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless. We bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. <laughs> being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscoring off of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. For though ye have 10,000 10, instructors in Christ, think about that. For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ. How many people are calling themselves Christians? Hmm? Look on YouTube here. Yet have ye not many fathers, lowercase f. And it's not a reference to you pathetic Catholics. And I say that with charity. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Remembering that Paul is our example as how we are to live as the church of the living God today in this dispensation. Okay? And of course, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 9, under verse 17. <clears throat> about these fakes, about those who persecute you for standing up for the truth, whether it's out there, online, or in your own house. And I know for certain that there are those of you, my brothers and sisters, whose enemies are they of their own house. And I pray for you every day. But they shall proceed no further. Verses 9 on verse 17 in 2 Timothy chapter 3. For their folly shall be made manifest, shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also was. He shall know them by the fruits. But thou hast known, thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, where they were first called Christians. At Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Yeah? Yay. You're looking at verse 12, right? You know, um, brethren, sisters, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. The fact that it's getting worse and doors are, clo are closing and people are just coming out like crazy as fakes. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving 
and being deceived. There is nothing more dangerous than to deal with someone who is clearly wrong according to the scriptures but are convinced in their own head that they are correct. Those, those people, perfect example, charismatics. You can show them scripture upon scripture upon scripture. Uh, hey, the sign gifts were for the Jews. It's it's gone past. Uh, the the latter rain, Joel twenty, uh, Joel two twenty three, partially fulfilled. There's still more to be fulfilled. It's all for the Jews. Hopefully, if the Lord will will, I will be doing a video exposing the latter rain movement. But um, those are being deceived. And deceiving. God is not the author of confusion, remember. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that's not a man. That's not a man, is it? Let's keep reading. Okay, note this verse. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Oh, I learned them from Brother Brian. Oh, I learned them from Brother Aaron. Oh, I learned them from Brother Jacob. Men of God. Men of God. Preachers of the Word of God. Yes. But, and every one of them would agree. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Um, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. See, it's the Lord who speaks through Brother Brian. It's the Lord who put it into JT to put to make that book uh, Defending the Godhead. It is the Lord who speaks through Aaron Judge. Why do you think that fine young preacher is so hated? Because the Lord speaks through him. It's the Lord. It's the Lord doing the work. Not men. Not men knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Now the Lord will speak through men, of course. Of course. Hello. But it is the Lord. God gives the increase, brethren. See what I'm saying? Also now go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 under verse 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 under verse 12. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to com comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation aboundeth also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer, or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, 
so shall ye also so shall ye be also of the consolation for we would not brethren have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in asia <laughs> that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, even so, in so much that we despaired even of life. That's yeah, very easy to do nowadays, isn't it? But we had the sentence, sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead. Hold your place. Go back to Psalm 39. Psalm 39. Go back there. Okay? Psalm 39. Verse 4. Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. Dependence on the Lord. Nothing but dependence on the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, almost beating a dead horse. But our time's almost up. Now is not the time to compromise. Now is not the time to hang it up. Let's continue. Who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Ye also helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. For our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience, the testimony of our conscience, clean conscience, one that's right with the Lord. That in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world, and more abundantly to you word. And Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 on to verse 14. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Don't you think for a moment there, beloved, that you are forsaken when you've got twits attacking you? Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. That's our end right there, brethren. And brethren, These lockdowns are coming rather quickly, and it's going to be far worse than before. Our time's almost up. Don't despair. Don't shrink back. Press onward. Unless it is the Lord that says, okay, that's enough. But until he say, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Psalms. Go back to the Psalms. 
Psalm 141. Psalm 141. And guess what? We're going to read Psalm 141, 142, and 143. <gasps> oh boy! Lord, I cry unto thee. Make haste unto me. Give ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. Incline not my heart to any evil thing, to practice wicked works with men that work iniquity, and let me not eat of their dainties. Get a load of that one. Lord, don't let me compromise to make peace with people who have no idea what peace is. They go back to Egypt. The world. They trust in Pharaoh and his chariots, the devil, and all his minions. Incline not my heart to any evil thing. To practice wicked works with men that work iniquity. Be not partakers of their evil deeds. By consenting through silence, you are a partaker of their evil deeds. If you just sit back and say nothing. Well, Brad, it might not work. No kidding. But remember, clear conscience. I would rather say something that no one would hear rather than um, not saying anything that no one would hear. <laughs> you get it? You get it? Talking about rebuke, let the righteous smite me. It shall be an, a kindness when your brothers rebuke you, correct you. You know it's kindness, right? Or are you too full of yourself? And let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil, which shall not break my head, for yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. I am thankful to every brother and even a few sisters who have corrected me, who have rebuked me. There ain't nothing wrong with the Church of the Living God through the Lord correcting their own out of love. Not to put a, a notch in their belt or anything, you know. Just, no, that's not what it's... No. One of the ways someone handles a rebuke is very telling on what side they truly are on. To, to, yeah, yeah. Don't you forget that. <clears throat> when their judges are overthrown in stony places, they shall hear my words, for they are sweet. Our bones are scattered at the grave's mouth. As when one cutteth and cleaveth wood upon the earth. But mine eyes are unto thee, O God. Here's the turning point of the psalm. Most of these psalms have these things. Turning points. Switching of direction. Most of them do. But mine eyes are unto thee, O God. The Lord. In thee is my trust. Leave not my soul destitute. Keep me from the snares which they have laid for me, and the gins of the workers of iniquity. 
Oh, and there are quite a few of them out there that have, uh, have laid snares for me personally. <laughs> At least I give you scoundrels a reason to exist. How pathetic you are. <laughs> Take a pardon, brethren. Let the wicked fall into their own nets, whilst that I with all escape. Perfect way to finish that psalm, isn't it? Let the wicked fall into their own nets, whilst that I with all escape. Psalm 142 now. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. With my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. I poured out my complaint before him. I shewed before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path, and the way wherein I walked have they privily laid a snare for me. When your spirit is overwhelmed, where do you go? Like I said, it's very easy to find yourself di being diverted to things of the world to find relief. No, no, no. The more overwhelmed you are, the more you ought to be on your knees. And then just like in the book of, um, what is that, Numbers? Where the Lord says, there it is, go get it. I'm with you, go get it. Put your legs into your prayers. Let's continue. I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. <laughs> Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. I cried unto thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. The righteous shall compass me about. Bring me out of prison. When, when you're afflicted, when you're getting attacked, when no one's listening to you, when it seems that you're wasting your time, you feel like you're in a prison going nowhere. Bring my soul out of prison that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about. The righteous. The church of the living God. Fellowship with brethren. Or... The, the sisters, you sisters, you know, I had fellowship with five, uh, four of the finest Church of the Living God that I know, men that I look up to, every single one of them, every single one of them. For thou shalt deal bountifully with me. Psalm 143. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications. In thy faithfulness answer me, and in thy righteousness. And enter not into judgment with thy servant. For in thy sight shall no man living be justified. <laughs> For the enemy hath persecuted my soul, he hath smitten my life down to the ground. He hath made me to dwell in darkness, as those that have been long dead. Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me, my heart within me is desolate. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the work of thy hands. I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsteth after thee. As a thirsty land, Sheila. Does your, your soul better be thirsting after the Lord through his word, the authorized version of the scriptures? Hear me speedily, O Lord. My spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. 
Get a load of that one. Those who call themselves Christians think they're doing the Lord's work by slandering, by attacking, by teaching craziness out there. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. Those who don't know the Lord, but they think they do, but they really don't. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning. Yeah, read the scriptures. Every morning, Jack, at least an hour a day, how are you doing at that? I know there are some of you that are doing very well at that. Praise the Lord. In the, remember, in the beginning, God. I love that verse. Look at that again. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, spending time with him in prayer and reading the scripture. For in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. How shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? Psalm 119, go find it. For I lift up my soul unto thee. Deliver me, O Lord, from mine enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. Those of you, my enemies. The Lord is my protection. And I trust on him. You could do nothing unless it were given you, allowed you. And you know, every time that you attack me, I get seem to just strengthen, be strengthened in the Lord even more so. More people come. I just want you to know, scoundrel, that you're having the opposite effect. So keep it up. <laughs> <clears throat> Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake. For thy righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble, and of thy mercy cut off mine enemies, and destroy all them that afflict my soul, for I am thy servant. Mm. Tell me something. You ever get lonely? What do you think we've been looking at right here? Lonely? You ever struggle with that? Brad, that's easy for you to say. You got a wife. Remember, brethren, who dwells in you? Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41. Excuse me, beg your pardon, one second, brethren. Okay, sorry about that, brethren. Getting a little parched here. I usually have a bottle of water when I do these things, so I didn't. Isaiah 41, verse 8, onto verse 29, to finish the chapter. Now remember, doctrinally, different dispensation written specifically onto the Jew, okay? Our instruction in righteousness. Brother, sister. Once this thing officially hits, you can't be taken aback by it. You can't be sitting there like, what hit us? You No. The 
But thou, o Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Hmm. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and called thee from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. Specifically for the children of Israel, obviously, but to instruct us in righteousness. When you are saved, you are of the chosen. Not that Calvinism stuff again, none of that. Once you get truly saved and born again, of the church of the living God and are sealed until the day of redemption, you are of the chosen. Let's continue. Fear thou not, for, look at that, I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Remember when you see the I am's? Circle them. I already did, a long time ago. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the, with the right hand of my righteousness. The imputed righteousness of Christ. Not of our own. Not of the law. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. Hello. Your time is coming. When you're going to be ashamed and confounded. And by then for all of you enemies of the Lord, it's going to be far too late. They shall be as nothing. And they... That's, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. <laughs> Very quickly, every once in a while when you're in a, a low place, you might be start thinking, oh, how could I as a saved man think that? How could I do that? Lord be like, what part of seal don't you understand? What, my blood wasn't good enough for you? You know what I'm saying? Even them that contend with thee, they that war against thee, <laughs> shall be as nothing and a thing of naught. Brother Aaron, Brother Brian, even myself, those that war, literally war against us, against you, brother, against you, sister, for standing up for the truth. They that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. The time will come. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. <laughs> Good enough for me, eh? Right? Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Again, this is talking about here more so of a future prophecy, destruction and righteousness. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. Even though my one tooth finally fell out, yay, you needed to know that, by the way. That's why I, I was kind of down yesterday. <laughs> Thou shalt thresh the mountains. And beat them small, and shalt make the hills as chaff. Thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord, and shalt glory in the Holy One of Israel. When the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, 
I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. Coming very soon. The time of Jacob's trouble. I will. <laughs> Note these two verses. Verses 18 and 19. I will open rivers and high places and fountains in the midst of the valley. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the sheeta tree, and the myrtle, and the olive tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree, and the pine, and the box tree together. Think the Lord's going to do it? They that, may, that they may see and know, and consider, and understand together, that the hand of the Lord hath done this, the Holy One of Israel hath created it. And all things seem to be going against you, but yet the Lord is providing for you. Only the Lord can do such a thing. Only the Lord can sustain myself and you. And your enemies who want to bring you down. Who want to literally destroy you and literally kill you if they had a chance. But yet you keep uh, persevering. You keep going on. Because you have the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. You are sealed unto the day of redemption. With the Holy Ghost and the Lord is our spirit. I love this one. Produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, saith the king of Jacob. The king of Jacob. Give you 50 guesses who that is. Verse 49, don't count. Let them bring them forth and shew us what shall happen. Let them shew the former things, what they be, that we may consider them and know the latter end of them. Or declare us things for to come. Shew the things that are to come hereafter, that we may know that ye are gods. Yea, do good or do evil, that we may be dismayed and behold it together. Yeah, bring forth your reasons. <laughs> oh, no, bring forth your strong reasons. Show us the former things. Yeah, go ahead. What's going to happen? Come on, bring it on. Verse 24. Behold, ye are of nothing, and your work of naught. An abomination is he that chooseth you. And what abomination chooseth the enemies of our Lord? Hold on one second, brethren. I got to find this a little impromptu from my notes. Sorry about that. I had to find this real quick. Okay. Behold. Yeah, you. Ye are of nothing, and your work of naught. An abomination is he that chooseth you. Luke chapter 4, verses 5 on to verse 8. And the devil, taking him up into an high mountain, shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If Thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. 
Every single one of you infiltrators, you Jesuit scoundrels, you fakes, you church building lovers, all of you. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. That's what you're doing, huh? What does our Lord have to say about that? You know, our Father, our God, our Lord Jesus Christ, whom we serve, the church of the living God, not you. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God only, and him only shalt thou serve. You cannot serve God and mammon. Verse 24 in Isaiah 41 again. Behold, ye are of nothing, and your work of naught. An abomination is he that chooseth you. I have raised up one from the north, and he shall come. From the rising of the sun shall he call upon my name. And he shall come upon princes as upon mortar, and as the potter treadeth clay. Who hath declared from the beginning that we may know, and before time that we may say, Here is right, He is righteous, yea, there is none that sheweth, yea, there is none that declareth, yea, there is none that heareth your words. The first shall say to Zion, Behold, behold them. And I will give to Jerusalem one that bringeth good tidings. For I beheld, and there was no man, even among them. And there was no counselor that, when I asked of them, could answer a word. Behold, they are all vanity. Their works are nothing. Their works are nothing. Their molten images are wind and confusion. And with that, Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, all these people attack you, feel overwhelmed, overburdened. Remember, the enemies of our Lord are vanity. All men are vanity. Romans chapter 8. Verses 31 on to verse 39. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? You need to keep that in mind when all this stuff goes whoop, crazy. And it's coming very quickly. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Remember, you are elect when you are saved. You are of the elect. Okay? Right there, the elect is talking about the church of the living God. Okay? The context shows you that the elect is obviously talking about us. Okay? Whereas the elect are also the children of Israel. Primarily. Mainly. Okay? But right there in context, the church of the living God today to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Never forget that the Jew is the apple of God's eye. Who is he that, conten that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded, neither death, neither death, nor life, 
nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Second Timothy again, chapter 4, verses 16 and 18. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. What else do I got to say about that? John chapter 16. John chapter 16. Verses 32 on to verse 33. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. Yet, and yet, I am not alone, because the Father is with me, the soul, the Godhead, the Spirit's own body. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. <laughs> but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. While we're here, John 14, verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, then the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Matthew chapter 28. Verses 18 on to verse 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And what name is that? Spirit, soul, and body. These three are one. There's only one name given among men under heaven by, which, by where we must be saved. teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have, I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. 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 very easy, especially right now, to get downcast. But brethren, we have to remember, 
sisters, we have to remember. Our time is coming to an end very soon. And all these evil fakes, they are of nothing. And their work will come to naught. You have the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, dwelling within you, Church of the Living God. What have you to fear? Psalm Psalm 27 The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. Remember, ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And that is a lowercase r rock there, just so you know. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me, and answer me. Verse 7 is the turning point. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help, leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. <laughs> you gotta love that one, right? Look at that. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. <laughs> Teach me that way, O Lord. And lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path. You want a plain path? Here you go. Here you go. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies. For far. <laughs> For false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. Y yeah, yeah, hello. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, wait, I say, on the Lord. I think that's all I got to say about that. Like I said, brethren, Church of the Living God, th this was not what I was planning. Okay? This was what this was not what I was planning. Like I said earlier, um, I was working on one thing. The Lord clearly 
clearly like no no it's like okay and then another thing came up it's like this no not that it's like what about this not yet on that one <laughs> sit down you sit down it's like lord what is there anything without it's, it's up to you May the Lord be glorified. Keep each other in prayer. Pray for one another. Love one another by being truthful to one another and being there for one another. And out of love, correct those who need correction. Comfort those who need comfort. And listen. Sometimes, brethren and sisters, one of the best things you can do, again, one of the best things you can do is to shut your mouth and let someone else do the talking. I love you. Thank you so much for watching. If you do, I just hope the, the Lord be glorified. The Lord be glorified. And we will see you in the next video, whenever or whatever that may be. We'll be soon, hopefully, Lord willing. I love you.